Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Today we speak to a woman named Jacqueline from London who met a man named George Peterson on LinkedIn. Jacqueline will share her one-year relationship she had with this man who manipulated and lied to her to attempt to dupe her out of money. Well, let's hop into it. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Jacqueline. I live in the United Kingdom in the east of England. I'd been single for a while. I wasn't looking for love. I was quite happy being single, an independent woman. I went through a year of talking to somebody online. He'd made contact with me through LinkedIn and we got to be talking every day. So his first message to me on LinkedIn was just, hi, thanks for connecting. How are you? And said I'm fine thank you that nice to connect this person told me that his name was George Peterson he lived in the United States he lived in Santa Barbara he said he was from Germany but that he'd been living in Santa Barbara for many many years he'd gone into gem trading and diamond trading because that's where he realized he could make his money but also because his parents were geologists in the past and he was quite experienced in that field. He was just very kind. He would exchange music. He would send music through and we would talk about music. I like music a lot. So that was something that we had in common. He would send me a message in the morning because there was an eight hour difference. So I'd often wake up to a message in the morning. He'd be talking during the day. He'd even message me during my morning, which was his night time. And they were just really nice conversations. We were getting to know each other really well. We were talking a lot and communicating on WhatsApp through messages. And it was just a really nice feeling. And as time went on, you know, he said after about three months that he was in love. And it was just a nice feeling for him that he found somebody in, you know, in such a way by just talking to somebody that we've got to know each other so well. And he would say it's, you know, it's everything he'd been looking for in a person. I had asked him once to FaceTime me and he said that he had a bad connection because he dropped his um, internet connection to travel. And then out of the blue, he kind of one day just said to me, um, I need your help. And I said, what, what is it? What do you need? And he said, my dogs uh, need an operation. One of the dogs has an eye problem. I have to pay between 400 and 700, 800 dollars and I can't transfer anything. I don't have access to my bank accounts. Can you help me? He said, are you asking me for money? And he just said, yes, I am, which really stunned me that he just said, yes, I am. He didn't seem bothered that he was asking me for this money. And the next day he just had a normal conversation as if he hadn't asked me to do that at all. He said he bought me a car. And I said, I don't need a car, I have a car. And he said, no, I want you to have the best things. I've, I've bought you this car and I'm bringing it over with me. So he sent a picture of the car. He sent a picture of a him um, having a cup of coffee with shipments behind him. And then he kind of said, you know, I'm getting ready. Look, this is me getting ready. I've just organized the shipment of the car and the vehicle. I'm going to put some of my stock in the car and it's going to come over to your house. It will be delivered directly to you. I was still a little bit suspicious. For me, it was just this would happen if it happened. If he came off the plane, then I would know it was real and it was him. And if it wasn't, then, you know, this was just going to be you know, pretty hard to take. But I'd not parted with any money. I, you know, I had not at any time considered that I would do that. He texted um, pretty much all afternoon saying he was getting ready to go. He packed up. He texted when he got to the airport, said he was waiting to board. He talked about being in the airport. He talked about being really tired and couldn't wait to be on the plane. He sent a short video of Emirates Airline. You could see that some, you know, somebody was taking a video. I couldn't see him, but uh, at the top of the plane, boarding and getting on the steps. You could see it was Emirates Airline. Um, and he said he was in his seat. He was really tired. Um, it was two o'clock in the morning in my time. But would I stay with him um, until they'd taken off? And then out of the blue, he said um, within a few minutes, he said they just called my name. 
I have to go up to the front. I said, well, you must have lost a document. And he said, no, I've checked. I have all my documents with me. So then he texts from the front of the plane saying, I'm being asked some questions. I have to go with these people and I have to stop texting you. The thing that was throwing me was that I was then getting an alert from the shipping company to tell me that the shipment was on the way. So if it was fake, then how come I was getting this alert from the shipping company that I Googled, I'd looked up, I'd explored everything, I'd gone on the site and it looked very genuine. And that was kind of confusing me. He had to pay a fine, but there was nothing to worry about. He got money on him and within a few days he would be here. And he was sorry for, for putting me through the worry over the past few days and it would all get sorted. As the days went on, he said um, he had to raise some more money and that he um, was going to ask a couple of friends he'd been lending money to in the States and he was sure they would give him the money. In some ways, I was feeling a bit guilty for feeling that I was doubting him. And, you know, there was a shipment on its way uh, to the UK that proved that he was coming. But then he started to um, indicate that he needed more money and the money needed to be raised. And he started to turn in his conversations and he would kind of, guilt trip me a little bit by saying you know my friends can't raise any money but they're asking me what is the woman that you've given everything up for what is she doing to help you out this situation that you're in and you're in it because of her and it was completely toying with me um, the shipment had then got to um, one of the air uh, the local airport and the message said that they wanted to inspect the vehicle I messaged him to tell him that that was the case and he said no I've done all the paperwork. They don't need to inspect the vehicle. Please don't let them because they will find my gemstones and I don't trust that they wouldn't be stolen. It's my livelihood. So I decided to take matters in my own hand and do some exploring with this shipment site and ask them what it was they were looking for and what they were asking for. They said they needed a NIC, which was a non-inspection certificate, which I'd never heard of. So I Googled for hours and hours and hours um, about non-inspection certificates and what they were used for and if they were valid and if they could be used. And that just seemed to me as if it was really fake, that this wasn't something that could stop customs um, inspecting that vehicle or his shipment in any way. I never found out about the shipping company itself. That always looked quite real to me. But the non-inspection certificate didn't look real at all. It didn't look as if it was something valid. But what I did notice was that when he was texting me at the same time, within 10 minutes, I was getting a notification from the shipping company. And that at that point made me hit the reality that this was fake. He was never on the plane. He was never coming to the UK. This was all just a scam and he was linked to the shipping company. I sent him a long message to say that you have been found out, you are the shipping company and you are, you know, this has just been a lie to you for a whole year. Everything that you said was a lie. Everything that you claimed was a lie. It's a fake profile, you're completely fake. And all you've been trying to do is get me to pay 7,000 pounds. He said that wasn't the case and that I got it all wrong. This was somebody that, drew me along into believing them, into believing and lying to such an extent. I would like to find out where that shipping company is from, uh, that it is absolutely fake. It would be good to know who the real person was in the picture so that you can park that to one side so that that is somebody else's life, who the person is in the pictures, and that gives closure to that. But that location, again, just gives closure to be able to move on. But for me, I think the main thing is is supporting Social Catfish in being able to promote these videos to educate people, men, women who get drawn into this. After talking to Jacqueline, we looked into this mysterious man who claimed his name was George, the shipping site and all the documents and emails she received. All of it was fishy. It wasn't hard to figure out that Jacqueline definitely dodged a scammer. It was pretty tough to verify who exactly this man was, but with the tools on our site, we're able to find anyone in minutes. If you're looking to find the identity of your online lover, you can start with the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio.
Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. Hi Jacqueline, how are you doing? Today we just had a few more questions for you and also wanted to run through some of the stuff that Brianne was able to find. Okay, great. What was the reason you were in contact with them the whole year, even though you saw all the red flags? I know, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because you don't want to accept those red flags. You you know, it's not like a big danger zone. They, sometimes they were like what I would call pink flags. They were, is this is this me being overly cautious? Is it, you know, would he genuinely need me to do something to help him? if he was giving everything up to come over here, is that how it would work? But at the same time, I was I was in kind of two camps. I was, I wanted to believe it was true. I wanted to believe it could happen. But at the same time, I was being really cautious and just don't open any bank accounts, just don't send any money, just, you know, realize that you haven't spoken to this person. For yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, Brienne has, a few things that she's been digging into. So Jacqueline, the first thing I'd like to jump into from the investigation is the the website called Royal Express Services. Um, how often did you use this site? So he um, said that I should get an email alert. I went into it quite regularly with the mm -hmm. tracker, the number that you were given as a tracker number, and I would keep going in to track the information to see where the so-called shipment was and I would track that quite regularly. This website is actually a fake website and it, it's only 70 days old, which means it was created fairly recently. One thing that you guys have to understand is that these scammers are clever. George used this website to try to dupe money from Jacqueline. At first glance, it looks like a legit business that you would trust to do business with. But like Brianne said, this website is 100% fake. These scammers spend hours and days working on these websites to make them seem legit. I'm trying to click on the buttons and they don't take me anywhere. This is a huge red flag. An established company would never have this problem. Brianne was able to find out that the website was literally created the same week Jacqueline received the tracking number for the car that George bought her. This is not a coincidence. <laughs> If you are skeptical about doing business on a website, you shouldn't be on it. But if you want to vet it, one of the best ways is to check the Whois history on the website. It's super easy. Just copy the link from the website you want to check out, paste it in, and you'll get the site's credentials. If this tip helped you, leave a comment down below. Let's get back into it. So you sent us over an invoice from the website. And so I broke it down. The first thing that I had noticed was the QR code down at the bottom. When I went to the QR code, it only led me to a QR code template website. To a place where you can create a QR code, right? Correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something else on the invoice that stood out to me was the address. So I searched the address where the website claims that it is located. So I searched that address and the name of the street is an actual mosque in Dubai. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I thought I would share that fun fact with you. Okay. At least there was a relig religious side to it in some way. So there are multiple different types of scams. In this particular relationship with George, this is what we call a parcel package scam. A parcel package romance scam is when a scammer gains a victim's trust and tells them that they have lots of money or a valuable item that they are going to ship them. The scammer will usually send some kind of tracking info. This builds the anticipation, right? In Jacqueline's case, it was diamonds and the car. The scammer will then ask the victim they need to pay a fee that is much smaller than the value of the item that they will be supposedly receiving. This is exactly where the scam was leading to. The scammer gets the money and the package never arrives to the victim. We ended up finding the real person in the photos. And this guy, he's a really good artist, actually. He has a talent. Yeah, yeah. he's very talented. He, sure. he makes, a, I think it's like digital paper art. Mm -hmm. And his name is Yossi Ben. And he is out of uh, San Francisco on his Instagram. He has very few pictures of himself. He's mostly got social media 
just for his art and you can actually reach out to him and, and DM him and actually purchase a, a, a piece of his art. I've never seen anything like this. This art is, is quite amazing. Where did this scammer get those pictures from? He wasn't sending me pictures of art. They were other pictures, obviously, the ones like the ones I sent you. But if he didn't have a lot of Instagram pictures, where did where do those pictures get stolen from? If you dig into his Instagram a little bit more, you'll find those photos of him. Um, we I definitely did see one that actually matched up with the one that you received from George. You know, just like with my social media, your social media, it's, it's ever changing, right? So maybe in the past he did have several images of himself and for privacy reasons decided, you know what, I wanna take those down and just focus on my artwork. No one really knows the reason why people change their, their profiles and their pictures, but I, that's something that I believe. Those people in the photos are usually dealing with this every day. Right. So people are constantly harassing them, reaching out to them, telling them that their, their photos are being stolen. And it probably just gets annoying after a while, right? I can imagine. And he's it's, on, you know, those pictures are on different scam sites now that I researched them. They're on different scam sites under different, many, many different names. So he must have been having these pictures stolen for such a long time. How do you feel about online dating and where do you go from here? <laughs> I don't know because I, I was not online dating. I, you know, I was obviously got into dating someone through LinkedIn, um, not, you know, networking for work, not to do with dating. I, you know, I don't know. I was having this conversation the other day with somebody about where do you meet somebody and is it safe to go online? You know, and it's it's a bit of a, you know, you would have to know that you were talking to somebody. I would have to be video calling immediately um, if I did want to start talking to somebody. So I don't know. I don't know. I, am I ready? You know, this, this, I feel as if I've got over this, you know, it was a few months ago. It was very hard at the time. It was a real emotional tug and the games and the, the tactics that these people play um, are really, really cruel and um, and it takes a bit to get over. But I feel as if I've got over it and I don't want that to impact me um, to have learnt from it and move on and do something more positive with it. Um, so where do I go from here? I don't, I don't know. What will be, will be. <laughs> I do agree with you though. I think it's a great way to start a friendship slash relationship by getting on that video call first thing i i do agree with you on that do we know where this person came from do we know where his calls were coming from eventually or the scammer we found out that the person that was behind the profile and the computer that was writing to jacqueline pretending to be george was located in abuja nigeria well jacqueline it's been really great getting to know you and for you to share your story and for you to take this time and bring awareness to romance scams and we really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate everything that you do and the education that you're giving out there. You can see it's making a difference. You can see on, you know, on Facebook and on Instagram, you can see that it's getting out there and this message is there. So it's just amazing work. And thank you for helping me put closure to this. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.